Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now in the previous episode, we started building our Dwarven Forge and we built a magnificent tunnel leading to the Forge Room itself. However, at the moment, we are still a little bit short on space to build the actual Forge, which means we have to carve out a chamber where we can get to work. And I've been picking away at the stone here, but this is going to take an age, which means I think it's time to head over to the castle, grab our beacon, and then come set it up in the forge room over here, just to speed things along a little bit. And we've got our beacon all set up, however, I didn't have anything to put into the beacon, so I went out, grabbed some emeralds, and now we are ready to come over here, charge the beacon, and ignite it. So in goes our emeralds, let's get hasted. Why? Hello? Why is it not accepting my emeralds? It does like emeralds, if I'm correct. Um, it's not allowing me to pick anything, which is really weird. So, what exactly is it that I'm doing wrong over here? Um, uh, hang on. Ah. So, a beacon needs an unobstructed view of the sky, and at the moment I've got a little bit of a ceiling in the way. So there we go, I've opened up the sky and we have haste and I'm going to give it haste too. I know I can do that with one emerald, but I keep forgetting. Anyway, we've got haste too and yes, just look at that, so much better. So let's get all of this dug out and then we'll have a magnificent chamber in which we can build our forge. But even with haste too, this might take a while, so I think the best thing we can do right now is to jump into a time lapse and watch the chamber take shape. And we have a chamber where we will be building our forge. And right now we've still got some dirt in there. I'm going to replace that with some other blocks. But we've got all the basics that we need for this chamber. And so far I think it is looking absolutely fantastic. Now I've created a nice high ceiling with a three wide block in the middle. And the reason for that is I want to have some lava cascading down from the ceiling into the forge. And that was what the dwarves used for fuel. But before we get to that, let's turn our attention to these recessed areas in the walls. Because this is going to be where I'm going to be building my lava farm. And I want this to look absolutely fantastic. And I've got an idea going here at the moment. It's not quite there yet. It's going to need a little bit more work. So let's get to it. And I've got two ideas at the moment. The first is this little double arch that I've got going here. And I really do like the way that looks. However, it is a bit of a problem because I've got this on the other end. And I really like the way that that looks as well. So um, I'm going to need to make some decisions here. And I'm not sure which one I like more. Now I think the best thing to do is to get busy. Perhaps add in a little detail. See what this is going to look like when it's done. And perhaps that will help me decide. So let's get some details on these two sides. And unfortunately it has not helped all that much. I still really like both of them. But I think I'm going to go with a double arch. It's just a little bit more ornate. And the dwarves love their intricate stone carving. So I think the double arch is the one that gets the nod. So now all we have to do is take what we've done here and transfer it to the other side. Let's get busy and let's get it done. Then we can move on to the rest of the chamber. And with the indented areas done, we can now move on to the next part of the project, which are the massive arches. And at the moment they're made out of dirt, but I want to make them out of some deep slate. However, at this moment I am all out of deep slate, which means it's time for a trip to the deep slate quarry. And this is where I've been mining deep slate for quite a while now. As you can see, I've uh, made quite a dent to the deep slate that we've got in here. And we are about to make an even bigger one. 
So let's get busy and let's mine ourselves a few stacks of deep slate. I have no idea how much this is going to take, so I think I'm going to grab roughly a shulker box full, which should be more than enough to finish this project and then we'll probably have quite a bit left over. So let's get busy and we're just going to grab a bunch of cobble deep slate, which we can use to make some bricks. And we've got our deep slate. It's time to go and see to those arches. Now I've already converted a bunch of the deep slate into bricks, so we should be ready to get started straight away. I'm going to grab a few stacks. Uh, let's just get rid of some of the nonsense in our inventory. And yeah, I think that should just about do it. Now what I need to do is, of course, dig away all of this dirt that I've placed here and then just replace it with some deep slate bricks. So I'm just going to start on this end, replace all of this dirt with some deep slate and then we'll see what that looks like once it's done. And that's a good start. Let's just take a step back. Let's have a quick look and yeah, impossible to tell right now. I think we'll have to do a little bit more before we'll be able to tell if this is the right move. And um, yeah, we've got the first arch in and this is going to sound really weird, but I think I like the dirt more. However, it's really difficult to judge at this stage. We still have some work to do up front here. And I think I've got one or two ideas that I can use to actually make it look even better. So I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to continue with the deep slate and I'm going to do the back arch as well. Now, once this is done, we'll have the full picture and we'll be able to finally tell whether this was the right move or not. And I must say, I sincerely hope it was. And with a back arch in, a little bit of work done to the front here and a few spruce accents thrown in for good measure, I must say this has actually turned out looking really, really good. So next thing is just to complete all of the details around here and I must say this chamber is really starting to look pretty awesome. And with that done, we can start working on the forge itself. And the first thing I need to do is find the center of this chamber because of course the dwarves would have built the entire chamber around the lava flow from the ceiling. And now that we've found the center, we can start planning where we're going to put this forge. And I think I'm going to start with making a nice round circle over here. And that looks pretty good. Let's just get this excess dirt out of the way. And I think we're off to a good start. Now, the next thing I need to do is, of course, plan the interior of this forge. Because the idea that I have is the lava is going to flow from the ceiling into the forge. And then from there, it's going to flow into the little end bits that I've got over here. So the first thing I need to do is build some culverts for the lava to flow through. Let's get one in there and one in there. And that should do it. Now I just need to figure out how I need to build the interior of this thing so that it will flow out from the ceiling into the ends. And let's just close up these sides as well while we're at it. So we've got the basic shape, we've got the idea of the innards working and I'm just adding a few canals into which the lava can flow. So I'm just going to use some stairs, I'm going to build it out like this, have the hollow bit at the end and our forge is really starting to take shape which means it's time to start thinking about a few details and I think maybe some stairs right down here will do the trick. And with the forge really starting to take shape, it's time to start thinking about some materials. And I think at long last, I'm going to start using some copper in here. Now, the idea is I'm going to let it oxidize and then clean it off to get the effect I want. But first, I need to finalize the inner workings of this forge. And I think I'm just about there, which means it's time to grab a bucket of lava climb up to the roof, plant it there and then let it fall down and see if this entire thing works. So there we go. We found our lava. We got a bucket. Let's get up to the roof and let's go set it up. And the lava is in and in a few seconds we'll find out whether I have calculated this correctly or whether I'm about to make a massive mess. But so far it looks good. I'm just going to get out of the way in case. Ah, no need to worry, it is a bullseye and we should be seeing the lava come through. 
think maybe just remove that block and yes here it comes now if I have planned this correctly it should be flowing out of all four sides but um, I have a suspicion that I have not planned this correctly because why would I do that uh, let's just see I think I might need to remove that block over there before I do that, let me just make sure, yeah, this side is flowing nicely, and then this side is also not flowing. So yeah, I definitely think I need to remove that block, it seems to be working now, and then let's go do the same on the other side, so that we've got the lava flowing out of all four sides. So there we go, and that should solve all of our problems. So let's just give it a second, and we should see the lava coming out any second, there we go. That side is flowing, that side is flowing, excellent. So the basics of our forge is done and it's time to turn our attention to the details. Now first thing I need to do is decide on the materials for the bottom here and then just jazz it up a little bit. Add a few bits and bobs to make it look really awesome. So let's think about some materials because as much as I want to use copper and I'm still going to use copper, it just isn't working down here. And it took some doing, but finally I have finalized all of the materials I'm going to be using for the forge. And just a little bit of decoration up top here. And then we can make our way down. Now you'll see I have used the copper. I've used some iron trap doors. And then I have used some stone and some deep slate down here. Just to give the impression that this has been charred. This has been burning and this has been hot for a very long time. Now the next thing I want to add is just a few iron trap doors up here because I am pretty sure I'm going to fall into one of these things pretty soon and when I do I can guarantee that I will be roasted because I won't be able to get out of it quick enough. So there we go we've eliminated that threat and I think the forge is starting to look absolutely brilliant. And I'm starting to look at the finer details like all of these little char marks, these pock marks on the ground where the dwarves have spilled hot metal or where perhaps just some sparks have landed. And I'm going to be adding some of these all around the forge. And the idea is to make it look like this forge has seen a lot of use, a lot of wear and tear and there has been a few mishaps. So let's get all of these in. And then the next thing I'm adding is some cobbled deep slate. Now this of course is where there were bigger spills of molten metal, perhaps a pot fell over and scarred the floor, but let's just get some of this in all around and we're just going to be adding it in in little patches. And next we're adding in some cobblestone, some mossy cobblestone, this is where the floor simply couldn't take the years of heavy abuse and has started to crumble. So a few more over here and there and as a finishing touch I have added in just some stone bricks so we've got a good mix and the forge floor is looking absolutely magnificent now i just want to go around collect up all of these torches and see how much light this forge is actually giving off i'm doing my best not to have torches and lanterns all over the place but instead use the light from the lava to illuminate the room but i think we might have a problem over here and i just had to chuck on some shaders and look at that an absolute sight to see the lava flowing from the ceiling into the forge and I think that is looking absolutely brilliant. A little dark maybe but we'll fix that. And I think the next part of our build is going to fix all of our light problems because it's time to start building our lava farm. Now to be honest I have never built a lava farm before but I know the principles, I know the basics and not to sound arrogant but I think it looks dead easy so we've got some cauldrons at the bottom we've got some rock at the top and then we've got some dripstone stalactites and then all we need to do is add some lava to the top over there and that'll drip through the rock down the dripstone and into the cauldrons so let's get some lava and i do foresee a bit of a problem over here let me just check Yep, exactly what I thought was going to happen. Oh, it's not done. Um, it's going to eat my torch. Fantastic. I'll just get out of its way. And there goes my torch. 
But no matter, I have plenty more. However, I think the problem is that I have built this entire section of the farm one block too high to fit into my arch. So I need to take down everything and then just sink it down one block. And there we go. The new lava farm is ready to receive its lava. I'm just putting some iron grates over there to help keep the lava in. And if everything has gone according to plan, this should work flawlessly. Okay, so first lava is in and it seems to be staying in. Let's get the other four buckets in here as well. Just three more to go. And we should have the first bank of our lava farm working now. Let's get the last lava bucket in here. And yeah, there we go. The lava is dripping and into the cauldrons. Absolutely brilliant. And I think that is proof of concept, so let's get the other ones done. And this is the last bucket I need for the third bank of lava, but I think it's time to start looking at some decoration. And I've been adding in some deep slate brick stairs over there, just to break up the stone a little bit, just to add a little bit something extra. And I really do think it is looking very good. Now I've got another idea that I want to try out here, but I'll have to see if this is going to work. And that idea is to add some spruce trapdoors right over here. And the problem is I don't know if this is going to catch fire because I've got a bad history of lava and things catching fire. Now I'm just going to install them here. I'm going to leave them for a while, see if they catch fire. And if they don't, I think I'll install the rest. And so far, so good. No fires to speak of. It's time to turn our attention to the roof. Now so far I've added a deep slate border at the bottom and I've added a spruce beam going across and the rest of the roof is going to be done in copper. But it's not going to be just copper, I'm also going to add some dripstone and then I'm going to have some plants hanging from the ceiling. Now once again the idea is to let the copper age and then I can clean it off or leave it oxidized as I see fit. But first things first, let's get it in. And we are done. The entire roof is now covered in copper. So let's just get rid of our dirt scaffolding and then we'll move on to the dripstone part of this. And uh, okay, that was a little bit silly. Let's just get this dirt out of the oh, fire, fire, no fire, bad fire. Uh, okay, I have no idea what I've done with my water, but I think let's just have some chicken. Let's get our hearts up. And we should be fine as long as we don't let our food run out. So uh, let's just get all of these things picked up. And yeah, there we go. I am all right. And I think we'll need to just keep an eye on that. Keep away from the lava because that would be a really, really silly way to go. But we should be fine. Uh, come on, seriously. Okay, uh, chicken, chicken, chicken. And I still didn't get any water. I'm going to get some water right now because this is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, I've got my water bucket, but I'm adding an extra layer of protection here because obviously I can't be trusted around lava. So we're just going to place two blocks of dirt. And as you can see, I cannot fall into the lava anymore. So let's just get all of that in there. And then I think it's time to get serious about the ceiling. So let's build some scaffolding up and let's get busy. Now the idea is I'm just going to mine out patches of this copper and replace it with dripstone. Then I'm going to add a few other bits and bobs. And I think the best way to do this is with a time lapse. And our ceiling is all done and it is looking pretty awesome indeed. So with that done, I think it is just about time that we tackle this part of the chamber. And what I'm going to do is just go around and line this entire wall with some dripstone. So let's just get a bunch of dripstone in there. And yeah, this, this, this might take a while. So let's just get up there. And then all the way down, we're just going to add dripstone to all the patches where I see some dirt. And we've lined the entire wall with dripstone. And now we're just adding in a few stalactites. And I want to put one there, but I don't think my scaffolding is reaching there. Let's just get... Yeah, there we go. And it's looking pretty decent. 
Next up, we adding some leaves, of course, because what is a cave without some lush foliage growing everywhere? And I'm just going to go around, dot it wherever I see fit. And I think this is going to look brilliant. However, it might be time to start thinking about taking down my beacon because right now it's simply getting in the way. And yeah, that is looking absolutely brilliant. I've added some glow berries and together with the light from the forge and the light from the lava farm, we shouldn't have any mobs spawning around here anytime soon. Now the forge is pretty much finished, but we still have to do something about this chamber over here. At the moment, the beacon is sitting over here and um, yeah, it's time to think of what we can put in here. That's going to look absolutely awesome. I've got one or two ideas. It's not that big a space. So we really have to think about what we want to put in here. Something to complement the forge, something that the dwarves would have used and something that has not yet been reclaimed by nature. So I don't think it can be anything perishable, but let's start by removing our beacon. So my first thought was to build a big table where the dwarves would sit down. They'd have a feast and they would have some ale. However, thinking about it now, I don't think this was the best idea because this just looks like it's too new. After all, this forge has been abandoned for thousands of years and um, yeah, this table makes it look like they just left. So we need to think of something else that we can put in here. I do like the way this table looks, but I just don't think it fits the area. Now you also see I've made a few changes to the forge itself just to accentuate the lava coming down from the ceiling and yeah, I need to go have a think. And I've come to the conclusion that 100% the table needs to go and I've got another idea. Something that will signify just how long this cave has been abandoned, just how long the dwarves have been gone from these lands. So out with the new and in with the old. Um... Yeah, you'll get that in a minute. Anyway, let's gather up all of these materials because this is all good stuff and I can definitely use this again. So I'm going to build a tree because a tree will show just how long this cave has been abandoned, just how long nobody has tended to it. And the fact that it's been left here and allowed to grow will tell you that it has been decades, perhaps even centuries since anybody has put any care into this place. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just lay it out in dirt. Then I'm going to swap it out for wood. So let's get going. And the tree looks absolutely beautiful. I've added in a few glow berries just to keep the light levels up, a lantern. And then of course, you can see where the tree has pushed through the ground, pushed that stone up. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think this forge is finally complete. As you can see, I've added in a few other bits and bobs, some golds that the dwarves have dug up and left there. And I think this is a job well done. Of course, we're not 100% finished yet. Look at the lava farm is producing beautifully. But I think I need to add one more thing. And that is a little bit of protection. Because chances are I'm going to fall into this lava pretty soon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump the bucket in that little spot right there. And that gives me a piece of water to jump in once I get burned. Ow, ow, fire and into the water. There we go. Now, there's only one thing wrong with that. And that is that it's pretty far away from the other side. So I think I need to get another bucket, make another little water spot right over here. Let's just get a slab in there. There we go, and then let's go get some more water to put in there. And we have our water, we'll just pop it, no not there, in there. And then we have some protection on both sides of the forge. So we're walking along, we're not looking where we're going then, ow ow fire! And into the water we go, we are saved. 
And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's official that this forge is finally completed. And that gives us a chance to take a fly through and take a look at what we've created over the last two episodes. And first off, we have the cave leading to the forge with some of the dwarven architecture peeking out from the dripstone, not completely yet reclaimed by nature. And it shows you that the dwarves built things to last. Next, we reach the gateway to the forge room and just inside we have the tree. Broken through the ground, sprouted new life, and of course, more nature taking back its place on this planet. And then finally, we have the forge. An absolute marvel of dwarven ingenuity and a testament to their ability to use their surroundings to their advantage. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is unfortunately all we have time for today. I really do hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you did. And if you want to see some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time, beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye-bye.